here in chapter four with transformations. Now what we're going to focus in on is rotations. So 4.3, section 4.3, talking about rotations. What's a rotation? A rotation is a transformation where a figure is rotated around a point, usually the origin, but it doesn't have to be. We are going to focus in on when it's rotating around the origin, okay? Now, a rotation can happen both clockwise and counterclockwise by any point, but we're going to focus in on 90, 180, or also 270 degrees. Okay, so what does a rotation do? Well, size is preserved. Okay, so one thing you have to know, kind of we've talked about it throughout, size is going to be the same. Orientation is not. Okay, so if you think of spinning, like for example, a, a triangle, if you're spinning a triangle, on a on a leash type setup like kind of like a dog leash and you're spinning that triangle on the end that triangle is rotating around and the orientation would not be the same it would change as the shape is rotated the size is not changing just the orientation okay so we got a couple rules to kind of learn here so one thing i will point out here is let's just make sure we got clockwise and counterclockwise so clockwise, think of a clock, a, an analog clock. You're starting at 12 here. You're starting at 3, 6, and 9. So clockwise moves me to the right, rotating around. So if you want to think of it, you're going from quadrant 1, quadrant 4, quadrant 3, quadrant 2, back to 1. Okay? Counterclockwise is the opposite. So counterclockwise... We have our 12 here, we have our three here, six and nine. Counterclockwise is moving to the left around, okay? So we're gonna talk about those two different things as we go through. The first one here we're gonna do is we're gonna do a 90 degrees counterclockwise. And what we have to understand is if I move this 90 degrees counterclockwise, that would be the exact same if I rotate it 270 degrees clockwise, okay? So 270 degrees clockwise and 90 degrees counterclockwise would be the exact same rotation. All right, so let's kind of look at our rule here and see what happens. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with X, Y, my ordered pair, and by rotating 270 degrees, or 90 degrees counterclockwise, what it's going to do is it's gonna change the Y and the X and it's gonna make the Y value negative. So when we look here, A, I'm gonna swap the Y and the X and I make the Y the opposite symbol. So A prime is going to be at negative one zero, okay? B is 5, 3. We're going to swap those. And what that's going to do, and then we make that a negative. So negative 3, 5, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here's going to be B prime. Okay. And then C prime is at 3, 0. We're going to swap those. And it's going to become 0, 3 which would put it here. Now, if the positive negative part bothers you and you're having trouble remembering it, one thing you just really have to remember is that a 90 degree rotation is going to change it. The Y and the X value are going to swap. Then as far as the sign goes, you can also look at it as to what quadrant would you be in? Well, if you think about it, if I rotate this 90 degrees, that's gonna put me in quadrant two. And every ordered pair in quadrant two is negative positive. So right away, since I know I'm rotating those into quadrant two, 
I automatically know it's going to be negative y comma positive x. Okay? Let's try another one. 180 degrees counterclockwise or 180 degrees clockwise is the exact same rotation. Now, what this pattern is, is, and this one will be set straight up, what you're simply going to do is you are going to change the sign on both, but they stay the same. So negative three would turn into a positive three, negative two would be a positive two. E is going to stay at zero, zero, because we're rotating around that origin point. And then F is going to be negative one, positive three. Okay, so when we look at this, when we go to rotate 180 degrees, E and E prime would stay the same. D now would be 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. If you think of it, D is going right over there. Okay, so this would be our D prime. Negative 1, 3, 1, 2, 3. This is going to end up being our F prime again, going right through there. And this would be our image now, rotating that 180 degrees. Okay, so it's just going to change both the X and the Y to the opposite of what they were. But the numbers are going to stay consistent. Your X is still your X, your Y is still your Y. Okay, let's try another one here. So now if we're going to rotate 270 degrees counterclockwise and 90 degrees clockwise. So what that's going to do, if you kind of think of it, we're going to rotate this 90 degrees. So notice the Y X, but this time it would throw me into quadrant three and every ordered pair in quadrant three is negative, negative. So 90 degrees clockwise is going to make those both be a negative value then, okay? So how does this one work then? So we're going to swap the X and the Y, and we just need to make sure that they're both negative at this point. For H, we're going to swap them. And for I, we're going to swap them and make sure that they're both negative. So H, G, and I prime is gonna go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Let me erase that marking there just so we can get an easy graph. One, two, three, four, one, two, four. And that is gonna give us G prime. H prime, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. That is H prime, and then we have I prime, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. So if you notice, the orientation is not staying the same, but the shape itself is. Okay, so there's your patterns of things that you need to know as far as that goes. Next, we have some rotational symmetry. Just like we have lines of symmetry, we also have rotational symmetry. Rotational symmetry, a figure has rotational symmetry if there are rotations where the figure is identical to its pre-image. Meaning, if I started at this point, how many places could I stop rotating? So I've got this pinned up against this, right? And I'm going to start rotating here. If I stop at that point, would it be exactly the same? And the answer would be yes. Okay, so that's one then. So now we keep rotating. If I keep rotating around and I stop here, that would be a second one. And that would be the same. And then if I keep rotating, I would make it all the way back. So there are actually three stops that would make it the exact same. So what we do is we say, okay, then what's the rotational symmetry? So what we would say is the rotational symmetry is 360 divided by the number of stops in a full rotation. So we would say it has rotational symmetry of 120 degrees. So that means we have symmetry at 120 degrees, at 240 degrees, and at 360 degrees. Every 
120 degrees. We have rotational symmetry. Okay, let's try another one. What's the rotational symmetry? So if I started here at the top and I rotated, would that be the same? And that would be yes. If I rotated to here, yes. If I rotated to here, yes. If I rotated to here, yes. And if I rotated back, yes. So I have one, two, three, four, five times where that would rotate. So if I take 360 divided by five, that would give me 72 degrees rotational symmetry. And then where does the figure have rotational symmetry? It would be every 72 degrees. So 72 degrees, 144 degrees, 216 degrees, um, 288 degrees, and then that would get me back to 360 degrees, okay? So at that point, you have your rotational symmetry going around every 72 degrees, and that would be our combinations of where we have rotational symmetry with the star here. Okay, let's try one more. What is the rotational symmetry here? So if I think if I start right here and I rotate to here, nope, that one's not going to work. If I keep rotating, though, and I can rotate all the way to here, that one would work. And then if I take that point, rotate it all the way back. So now I have 360 divided by 2, which is 180 degrees rotational symmetry. So where does it have it? Every 180 degrees. So at 180 degrees and at 360 degrees is where we would have rotational symmetry. Okay? And that is how we rotate around a figure using the origin.